Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation on the low temperature hydrogen by polyoxymetallate supported palladium semiconductor catalysts. My name is Max and I am a member of the Lab of Green Catalysis at the University, National University of Singapore. Single atom catalysts are reached when we go from the bulk to nano and sub nano structures. And once we reach this ultimate dispersion, the surface free energy is so high that we need to offer a suitable support to stabilize those single atom catalysts. Single atom catalysts can also be seen as a bridge between heterogeneous catalysts and homogeneous catalysts. Combining the high stability and easy separation with the well-defined structure of the active site, as well as the maximum metal atom utilization. We recently have proposed a few active stabilization principles based on colloidal principles. And what we will be talking about here is essentially the island stabilization mechanism, where the polyoxymetallates, where we support single atom catalysts, serve as the island. And even under reductive treatment, those single atom catalysts are fairly stable. Polyoxymetallates are small and molecularly defined metal oxo clusters. There's a vast variety of structures reported so far, structures and compositions, but we'll focus <coughs> today mostly on this Kagan polyoxymetallate, which is also shown on, on the left here. It has the composition of for phosphotungstic acid, PW12O40. It consists of tungsten oxygen octahedra uh, and a, a phosphate tetrahedron in the middle. We supported a palladium single atom catalyst on phosphotungstic acid, and we did X ray absorption spectroscopy to confirm the atomic dispersion. When we compare the <coughs> Xane spectra for palladium foil, palladium oxide, and our palladium single atom catalyst before as well as after reductive treatment, it becomes apparent that our palladium single atom catalyst is positively charged, presumably in a palladium 2 plus state. After doing some Xane simulation for a variety of different structures, we found that the most likely structure is a palladium zinc atom catalyst bound by two oxygen atoms from the polyoxymetallate and two water molecules. We further confirmed the presence of water molecules by Raman spectroscopy as well as ESIMS. Uh, we see that there's a pretty good overlap between the simulator spectra as well as the experiment. Uh, <coughs> extended of extended fine structure analysis confirms that there is indeed no palladium palladium scattering and also there's no higher order palladium oxygen scattering which essentially means that there's neither metallic palladium nor palladium oxide nano nanoclusters and nanoparticles present in our catalyst. Raman spectroscopy confirms the <coughs> confirms the stability of the polyoxymetallate even after reductive treatment. Wave transformation analysis again serves to confirm that uh, our palladium zinc atom catalyst does not include any palladium palladium scattering contributions, which will occur at wave numbers around uh, 10 inverse Austrian, whereas we only see uh, palladium oxygen contributions here at roughly 6 inverse Austrian. Uh, based on TEM analysis, we see that our particles are, have roughly a diameter of 200-300 nanometer and that palladium, tungsten, oxygen, cesium and phosphorus are homogeneously dispersed throughout those particles. When testing the activity of those zinc atom catalysts in the acetophenone, we, which we use as, as a model, model compound for the HDO, then we see that it has exceptional, exceptional HDO activity even under fairly low reaction temperatures as well as fairly low reaction pressures. The, <clears throat> the bars in red here, the cylinders in red here, indicate the data we got from our catalyst, while the black bars are either reference catalysts, that is mostly commercial catalysts, or previously reported data. And then we see that either the previously reported catalysts are uh, have very low reg rates under comparable reaction conditions to what we used, or in order to achieve comparable reaction rates, we need a significantly higher reaction pressure and reaction temperature. Now, since we, as you may know, the phosphotungstic acid, especially the cesium salt of the phosphotungstic acid, 
is one of the strongest uh, solid acid catalysts. So the question arises whether this uh, this reaction, the hydrogenolysis of the aromatic uh, COH bond, the conjugated COH bond, occurs through a dehydration hydrogenation or through a direct hydrogenolysis, hydrogenolysis pathway. And for this, we have done a reaction pathway analysis. So considering that uh, like if, if we treat uh, acetophenol and different gas atmospheres, either hydrogen or deuterium, we should end up with two different uh, uh, hydrogenated intermediates, which again, if we treat them under different uh, atmospheres like hydrogen or deuterium, we should be able to obtain different, different intermediates based on which pathway, pathway that follow. If we look at the uh, hydrogenated intermediate here, one and two, either under hydrogen or deuterium, and then we see that we have the incorporation of one deuterium atom, that is this deuterium atom here in the intermediate two, whereas, uh, whereas the OD will exchange with the solvent quite rapidly and will not see this in the GCMS spectrum. And our analysis for the final HDO product, starting from acetophenol under hydrogen, starting from the intermediate alcohol under deuterium, or starting from acetophenol under deuterium, give rise to three distinct intermediates. One of them is the fully hydrogenated intermediate, that is the black spectrum here, where we see the <coughs> usual quartet, quartet for those two protons. Whereas for intermediate, intermediate four, which we get by hydro, uh, hydrogenating under deuterium atmosphere of our intermediate alcohol, has the, the same structure of one, one proton couple, coupling to this methyl group here, while we also see the fine structure from the coupling to the uh, adjacent deuterium atom here. If we uh, hydrogenate, the, or if we do the HDO reaction of acetophenol under a deuterium atmosphere, and then we obtain the fully deuterated uh, uh, product, product spectrum with a with two deuterium atoms sitting in the carbon carbon seven position here, and no deuterium atoms sitting at the at the uh, methyl group here. Uh, same the same was observed from GCMS analysis, where we see the incorporation of two deuterium atoms, which do not sit at the uh, at the terminal methyl group here, but which sit at the uh, at the methylene group. This confirms that we have. Uh, that, that the pathway completely follows a hydrogenation to the intermediate alcohol and direct hydrogenolysis pathway and not the de dehydration hydrogenation pathway. In order to figure out why this catalyst has such an exceptional activity, we conducted some kinetic analysis and some further spectroscopic analysis. And we found that the, uh, based on the iron plot of the reaction, uh, of the reaction at different temperatures, the <clears throat> activation enthalpy is fairly low and the activation entropy is slightly negative, which means that the activation, uh, the transition, transition state is entropically disfavored. Uh, we observe a moderate kinetic isotope effect of roughly 2.4, which indicates that hydrogen to some extent is involved in a rate determining step. And the Hammond plot uh, shows that electron withdrawing uh, withdrawing substituents in the power position of the uh, ketone group uh, increases the reaction rate, thus indicating that we have a, probably a, a buildup of negative charge during the transition state for, for the hydrogenolysis. If we expose the, uh, the palladium zinc atom catalyst to either an atmosphere of hydrogen or deuterium, hydrogen is in black here, or deuterium in orange, uh, then we can observe that, that then we can we can we can confirm the heterolytic splitting of hydrogen. So we see the formation of uh, OH and hydride species, as well as the formation of OD and deuteride species. This was further confirmed by <coughs> inelastic neutron scattering, where we observe that for our single atom catalyst, we definitely see palladium hydride species. But in stark contrast to the bulk palladium hydride uh, signal, we do not see a very rigid and uh, nice 3D structure. Again, confirming that we have 
uh, atomically dispersed palladium singleton catalysts and hydroid species on them. We have done DFT calculations to, <coughs> uh, to figure out the reaction mechanism. And the first thing we've started with is the experimentally confirmed initial catalyst state. That is the state here containing palladium bound to two oxygen, by two oxygen atoms to the polyoxygen metallate and two, two water molecules. And this can, uh, can do the first hydrogen activation. That means it's uh, removing one of the water molecules as an H3O, H3O plus, which will then probably uh, be uh, like join, joining the uh, solvent molecules and a palladium, a palladium hydroid species here. Um, after, this, after the formation of this hydroid species, we can then remove one of the oxygen atoms from the support and form an oxygen vacancy. Overall, this process is uh, downhill and we observe moderate reaction barriers. For the second hydrogen activation, uh, which follows after the formation of the oxygen vacancy, we can observe a similar, similar mechanism and a similar, uh, similar intermediates, that is the palladium, uh, palladium hydroid species. And one of the protons is actually sitting on the support, on the polyoxin metallate support after the splitting of hydrogen. The reaction barriers for those hydrogen splitting are uh, significantly lower than for the formation of the active site. And for this one, since we didn't, didn't entirely finish the, active, the, the transition state energy calculation, we should even consider this to be, to be lower than uh, the value that is shown here. Then we have considered the first step, that is the CO double bond hydrogenation. Um, upon the uh, absorption of acetophenol of, uh, of after the uh, hydrolytic splitting of hydrogen, we can transfer the hydride, uh, after, we've, after we've transferred the proton from, uh, from the polyoxin metallate to the, to the substrate, to acetophenol, we can then do the transfer of the hydride species from palladium to the substrate with a activation barrier, with a, with a reasonable activation barrier, which is quite in accordance with what we have seen uh, based on our experimental, experimental data, based on the iron plot. After we've formed the phenyl, phenylethanol intermediate, um, we can, uh, this, this then follows after, after yet another step of hydrogen activation. This then follows a second, a second step where first uh, water is formed from the OH group here by proton transfer from the polyoxide metallate, followed by the hydride transfer from palladium onto, onto this positively charged intermediate and then releasing the hydrocarbon. Now, acetophenol is not a very interesting, interesting compound. It serves the trick as a model compound to understand the reaction mechanism. But we're also interested in a lot more realistic biomass-derived compounds. And we've taken a few, but I'm just showing, showing you the conversion of 5-HMF to 2,5-DMF, which is considered a reasonable technology to convert lignocellulosic biomass into renewable, uh, into renewable liquid fuels. And then we'll, if, if we take a look at the previously reported data, then we see that all of those catalysts take, uh, use temperatures of at least 100 degrees C to obtain reasonable, uh, reasonable activities. While for our single atom catalyst, for our palladium single atom catalyst on phosphotungstic acid, we achieve uh, significantly higher activity even at temperatures at or below zero degrees C, which is significantly lower than anything reported before. Uh, we have tried, we have, we have used a, uh, a, a catalyst with a significantly higher weight loading of palladium. Uh, for the single atom catalyst, the weight loading is actually 0 0.15 weight percent, so relatively, relatively low. Um, while if we use a weight loading of 3 weight percent of palladium on cesium PTA, we literally have no activity for the H2O whatsoever. Again, confirming that we need the single atom dispersion of of palladium on the on the support to achieve reasonable activity. Again, if we use a physical mixture of palladium on carbon and cesium PTA, or we use a commercial palladium on carbon catalyst, and we 
uh, we impregnate PTA onto the surface of this at two different pH. Uh, then again, we observe that we have essentially an inactive catalyst, at least under those given conditions for the HDO 5-HMF to 2,5-DMF. With those, I was uh, hopefully it could convince you that we were able to make a single atom catalyst with a fairly exceptional HDO activity, both for acetophenone as a model compound, but also for uh, more realistic compounds like 5-HMF to 2,5-DMF. <clears throat> uh, after, after almost three years of work, we were able to identify the active site structure, and we also uh, started to realize what the reaction mechanism can be. With that, I would like to <clears throat> with that I would like to acknowledge the Green Catalysis Lab at NUS, especially Prof, uh, Professor Ming Yang, who's been my supervisor for the last four years, as well as a range of uh, collaborators from Oak Ridge National Lab, from Kyoto University, from the University of California, LA, as well as Hokkaido University, who have helped us with uh, a lot of the spectroscopies, as well as the DFT calculations. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I would like to have a chat with you later on.